all my life experiences, my identity, my my still at that time, I was, I was under the, what I call the tyranny of they, what do they expect of me? Mm. What, how do they think I should show up? What do they think my value should be? What is, what, how do they define success? I was trying to meet all these bars of family members, of my boss, of people at nonprofits I was at. And I was so disconnected with not only that better version of myself, who I really was at the core, but a sense of true purpose that was compelling. The only thing I knew how to do was work harder. Yeah. And from the outside in, everybody would look at me and say, you know, he's doing pretty good, right? He's at the top of his career. He's on these nonprofits. He's at all of his kids game. Sarah, I had never been more miserable. I describe it in the book, as you said, as, as smoldering discontent. <laughs> I love you know, that and it's interesting as I got into executive coaching and, and as I was getting into it, I interviewed 10 CEOs from anywhere from hundred employees all the way to much bigger. And it's really interesting because every single one of them used at some time during our conversation, because I was trying to understand what are their biggest problems they're trying to solve as a leader. They all use the same phrase in some form or fashion. And that was this, you know what? I'd love to live life more alive. I'd like to live life more fully alive. Mm -hmm. They all talked about being alive and every one of them said they don't have it today. They don't even know what it looks like. They don't even know how to move toward it. But they just, but they just know that it doesn't exist. And I said, that's exactly how I felt. <laughs> right. Yeah. And what I realized was, is this whole journey for me of in here, what I realized is Sarah, I had to slow down. If you actually look at some of your clients that have probably had the best results, um, you have to slow down in order to speed up. We have to yeah. slow down in order to actually look inside and say, what are some of those lies that I've let into my identity and accepted them as truths? What are some yeah. of my limiting beliefs? And is there a liberating truth on the other side of that belief that can start to free me up? What are my core values? What are my, what are my passions. And I, I talk about in the book about this place of convergence as you go through and you really start to understand. Um, and for me, it was not who I saw in the mirror, but the person God sees when he looks at me and I realized the gap was massive. Hmm. And this is my opinion. I think the bigger that gap is, the more stress, anxiety, burnout, the um, frustration, anger problems, because I had all that 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 show up in your life and as i started closing that gap between that person in that mirror and that best version of myself for me all that stuff just started to melt away now some of it's still there but i gotta tell you it's it's gone from like a nine out of ten down to literally maybe a, a one or a two mm. 